Yeah. Hey guys, welcome back to Cuts from the Captain's Chair. We've got Toddy Page in the house today. How you going? He's come from the Gold Coast, 7 and one studio. Check it out. Today, he's going to show us how he approaches his haircuts. Toddy, what are we going to do today? We're going to do a um, textured mullet with a fade on the sides. Awesome. Awesome. It's going to be a bit of fun. We're going to get this mullet under control. Yes, sir. Give us some texture. How, how close are we going to go down on the side? Down to foils. Skin it out. Yeah. All right, let's do it. <laughs> Jump out of that. <laughs> Textured faded mullet. What's your first step? So I'll come into the sides with a four okay. and then blend it down from a four. Okay. And then go to the top with the scissors, a razor, and go from there. Unreal. Yeah. So we just want to keep the profile square as well. So just going to become an off the head. Essentially creating a guideline to work down from. So now I'll just work down, so now I'll go to a two and a half. And I'll just change between open and closed. So we're just continuing down the guards. So I've got a one guard on now. And I'm just repeating the same processes as before. Just sort of hand tailoring it and just looking at every little bit of a weight line or dark spots or Anything you can see. So Toddy, let me ask you, what comb do you use, mate? What's your favorite comb? Um, I've got a lot. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I've always used um, the wire spark combs, the okay. carbon ones, yeah. They don't, um, you know, when you're repetitively clipper okay. combing, rubbing with the clippers over them, they don't get sharp. I've been using the same comb for like two years and it's still fine. <laughs> Bro, look how fancy these shoes are. Are they double tons, bro? Yeah. <laughs> you know that. Double tons. So I've got no guard on now, just refining it through the zero and the, and the half. You're just plucking and picking out out those those little dark spots. Yeah. Yeah, light touch, like you're um, fading with a pencil or something. You know, you're not yep. pushing hard. You're not digging in. One of the last steps, obviously, the detailers, get that in at the very bottom and just reveal what you've been working on. So, Toddy, tell me why we leave this part to the end. So, the final step is the detailer come in and tidy everything up. And the reason I'll leave this to the end and leave the, the length there is so you can keep the height of the fade the same both sides yep. and control how high you're going so you're not going too low, not going too high. So, it's essentially yeah, a guideline, but the opposite. Opposite way yeah, of going. Yeah. On. I like it. It doesn't look as 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 forced. It, yeah. It looks really soft. And 100%. I'm a massive fan of soft stretched out fades. Yeah, me too. They've all got their place, but at least when you're doing it like this, you never really you never have a line to start with. Totally. Yeah, so you're never actually removing any lines because you never had a line to start with. Yep. You're just working down, you know. So this is just the final part of it just skinning it out with the foils at the very, very end, just ever so slightly. So now you've finished the sides. Yes. Obviously, now we're going to come through and do the top. Yeah. How do you approach the top? Do you start from the front or do you start from the back? I Talk start from, through. yeah, so I start from the front and I'll, I'll do the top um, with scissors and then I'll come through the back at the end with the feather razor because we're not taking too much length off this. Still, you know, growing it out. We want to get a bit more length in it. So I'm just going to take bulk out of the middle section and give it some texture and yeah. Unreal. So talk us through the foam tonic. What do you love about it? So if you're cutting someone who's got a tiny bit of product in their hair already or of a bit of grit, this helps break it all down. Helps you comb glide through it smoother. Helps the scissors cut through it smoother as well. I'm just going to come in horizontally with a cross section. Just make sure nothing's hanging over too much before we go into the top. Just refine the shape, blend it in. And you just want to maintain the square profile. Yeah. 
Now we're going to do the top. You're going to approach the first section from the front, Todd. Yeah, so we're going to work front to back. Um, we're not looking at taking too much length off, so I'm just going to be point cutting it, um, just giving it some texture and just making sure the shape's square that we want to keep throughout the whole haircut. And what scissors are you running, Toddy? I'm running the Mizutani DBs, the custom 7-in-1 edition. They're obviously beautiful scissors, really sharp. Everyone knows that, but the, the backstory behind them too, made in Japan by legit, you know, sword maker, samurai. Unreal. I just like... Um, buying quality things that last for a long time and they stand behind what they do. So now we're just making sure we're keeping that same guideline throughout. Keeping the fingers square so we're not rounding anything off. And then now we'll just come through and just cross section the top. And the same sort of thing, we're just notching out the middle. So we've cut front to back, we've cross-sectioned it, it's maintained the squareness either side. Um, you know the middle's not pointy or longer than anything else, which is what we're looking for. Um, and now we'll move on to the back. So I'm going to come through now and connect the top to the back. And I'm going to use my feather razor to take bulk and add texture to the middle section because I want to highlight the bottom of the mullet. And what we're looking at doing is just taking bulk out of the ends and just maintaining the square shape down here too because obviously the hair grows a lot thicker and there's a lot more prominent of the occipital bone. That part protrudes the most and you want to highlight the bottom of the mullet and make that the longest part of the haircut. So just like every other step in the haircut, we're looking for squareness. Nothing's rounded. And we're just lifting off the head and following it through so you'll notice that, you know, there's nothing really left down here. That's the longest part and that's what we're working on. And you'll just be going off your previous guideline, which you can see there. What are the do's and the don'ts you find with feather razors? Um, you want to be really careful around the fringe or, you know, any exterior part of the haircut. I mean, the do's, the, they're my favorite tool. It just makes the hair look like you've um, got a haircut two weeks ago, but it's at the exact length you want. And I guess you, the, a major don't is, um, you know, don't use it anywhere near the roots. As you can see here, I'm just Completely. using it through the very ends. And if, you know, his hair was another couple of inches longer, you could kind of scrape weight from the mid lengths. But um, yeah, you don't want to go anywhere near the roots because yep. it'll just cut it straight down. And essentially we're just over directing these to join the um, sections that we did at the very beginning just to connect everything together. This is just a cross sectioning technique. Obviously we've maintained squareness vertically um, and then on the top and now we're doing the same horizontally. You'll see the um, square profile in the mullet that we've worked on as well with those techniques. And the good thing about using the tonic and the feather razor as a combination in this type of style is that you can see the texture coming along nicely before you've even dried it and before you've refined it further at the end as well. We're just going to give it a rough blow dry. It'll highlight the texture and also emulate how it would dry naturally. This is just obviously a sped up process. So you can start to see the tonic is doing its thing now that heat's activated it. It stands up by itself but it also doesn't grip when you run your fingers through it and then you're not left with any residue at the end. Same with people styling the hair in the mornings too. This is a good alternative if you don't want to be on, you know, doing it for too long. So now you can see the square profile we've created throughout on the top and the back and you can see the texture that you've created just with the foam tonic alone before you use styling powder clay, matte pomade or anything like that. So that's just with the tonic and point cutting.
All right, Steve, come check it out, man. Let's have a look, hey? Toddy, look at that. Nice soft fade, I love it. Beautiful soft fade and all that texture on top. You can really see how that razor's really highlighted all those pieced out looks with the foam tonic. Mate, I love it. You've done a really nice job. Really lived in look at the top there. I love it. Well done, mate. Awesome, thanks, Legend. Thanks for having us.